Getting started with iOS app development isn't all that challenging. Xcode makes it easy to compose user interfaces and you can master the basics of programming in Swift in just a matter of days. If you keep implementing apps, the complexity of your programs will keep increasing. Over time, as you develop more sophisticated iOS applications, you will notice that your project source code gets bigger too. And while the software builds and runs normally, the quality of the code base might start showing some weaknesses. Here are a few signs that can help you identify the most common code issues and design problems. You know something's not right if changes spread through the code like wildfires. Implementing even the tiniest of features requires additional code changes in other, unrelated parts of the project. Another negative characteristic of such systems is that they are fragile. Fragility means that fixing a specific bug usually produces new problems, and correcting these new bugs leads to additional issues, and so on. Say we fix the formatting of dates, and suddenly we get sporadic errors in our model layer, and the logger stops working too. Although date formatting on the UI should not affect the database or the logger, somehow our changes spiraled out of control. Fragility is a common problem that affects poorly designed software systems that contain redundant code and unnecessary dependencies. The third sign is related to reusability. Suppose we want to reuse the date formatter logic we implemented earlier, so we bring over the code to our new project. However, the code doesn't compile due to missing dependencies. Extracting the date formatting functionality is impossible without bringing over unrelated classes and features we do not need. It's like having to buy a new pair of shoes, even though we only needed the shoelaces. Recognizing these signs early on will help you avoid mistakes that can have severe consequences in the long run. To keep your codebase clean, well-organized, and easy to maintain, regardless of the number of code lines, you need to be aware of a few rules and guiding principles. These principles, if applied correctly, will help you separate the concerns within your app. Assigning clear responsibilities to the components that form your application results in cleaner code that is both easier to parse and maintain. Even finding and fixing bugs is less of a burden in a clean, well-structured codebase. We'll talk about two widespread architectural design patterns in the upcoming videos. The Model View Controller and the Model View View Model. Let's talk about the Model View Controller architectural pattern. Do you know that we've already used it in this course? When we created the simple app using storyboards, we were working with the Model View Controller, or in short, MVC pattern. Open up the project from the exercise files, chapter 5, 0502, and folder. This should look familiar to you since it's the project we built in module 4. Select the viewcontroller.swift file. This class represents the controller in the model view controller architecture, and its primary role is to receive and process user input and provide the user interface with information. We assigned an action to the calculate button's touch-up inside event. Thus, whenever the user taps this button, the corresponding action gets triggered in the view controller. As a result, the app calculates the total cost with the sales tax applied. The view part denotes the user interface elements the buttons, the labels, everything that the user is able to see and interact with. Let's click on the main storyboard. This will open up the storyboard editor. The document outline panel shows all the view elements included in the view controller. The model in the MVC pattern represents the application's data and the business logic. Although our basic application doesn't have a model, real-world apps usually require some data and a way to retrieve or modify that data. The data flows between the view and the model through the controller. The controller may convert the model data to the format expected by the view. Similarly, the information coming from the view may need to be converted to a format that's compatible with the model. Suppose the model stores JPEG images as binary data. The controller will turn the binary data into UI image instances, which in turn can be displayed using an image view. And if the user modifies the image, for example by applying a filter, the controller must convert the UI image to binary data before passing it back to the model. 
Apple simplifies the model view controller pattern by merging the view and the controller. SwiftUI relies on a different architectural pattern called model view view model. Let's explore MVVM next. Let's have a look at the SwiftUI project we built in module 4. As you might have observed, this project doesn't have any view controllers. That's because SwiftUI applications do not follow the model view controller architecture. Instead, they rely on a different pattern called model view view model. The model and the view play the same role as in MVC. The view model acts as an intermediary between the model and the view. Thus, it has a pretty similar role to the controller in the MVC pattern. Now, while the MVC and the MVVM might look similar, there is a significant difference between them, namely the way changes get propagated between the model and the view. MVVM uses a technique called two-way data binding. Thanks to data binding, model changes get automatically propagated to the view and the view model. In addition, the model gets updated whenever the relevant data gets modified on the user interface. So, unlike with the MVC pattern, the model and the view controller don't need to explicitly notify each other about data changes. This approach eliminates a lot of code and removes dependencies, producing an even more decoupled design. Since less code means less maintenance work and fewer chances of introducing bugs, the MVVM pattern results in a code base that's more reliable and easier to work with. In this video, I show you a few fundamental coding principles that will help you write cleaner code. First, make sure you design your types around a single, well-defined responsibility. Adhering to this rule alone will improve your code tremendously. Assigning too many features to a type can lead to massive, monolithic classes. Such classes contain a lot of code, making it challenging to fix bugs or implement new features. Instead, we create one type per feature. A class that exposes high-level database functionality. A class responsible for the encryption and decryption of sensitive user data and a structure that wraps the helper methods used for date formatting. Given this setup, we can isolate code changes to smaller units. Suppose we need to fix an encryption-related issue. Those changes will only affect the class that deals with cryptography, leaving the other two untouched. In addition to assigning one well-defined functionality to a type, we should also limit the dependencies between our types to the necessary minimum. Decoupling our types will reduce ripple effects in the code base when changes occur. Consider the following example. The console logger class depends on the message structure because its log method uses it as an input parameter. We can easily remove this dependency by using built-in types. Now, this was an overly simplified example, but you get the idea. Another helpful rule is to try to avoid modifying the existing code when adding new functionality to a type. Keeping the existing implementation untouched eliminates the risk of introducing new bugs and can be achieved through classic object orientation concepts such as inheritance or composition. Or even better, we can employ Swift type extensions that let us enhance both classes and value types. Here's a useful string type extension that can save us from a lot of typing. Given this extension, instead of using NS localized string, we can simply write the following. Now, this is not a comprehensive list of clean coding best practices and rules, but it should definitely get you started.